Can you beat Octopath Traveler 2 with only Hikari? In this series of videos, that's what I aim to find out. First and foremost, expect heavy spoilers, as this is not intended to be a fair and honorable playthrough. We will be using every trick and exploit that I know to my advantage to beat the game. I will, however, not use any glitches that I'm aware of, such as the Achet Provoke glitch or any that might come up during a playthrough. The rules are simple. One, only Hikari is allowed in the party whenever possible. There are exceptions for when I'm doing chapters that require a different character in the party. However, that character must also be dead. And there is one other exception where I need Ochet to capture a beast in order to progress her story. But outside of that, it will be only Hikari or it'll be only Hikari alive. Two, only Hikari path actions are allowed except when needed for story progress. There's a few times where you have to coerce, you have to do this or that in order to get further into the story, but we are not allowed to get items from any NPCs. We are only allowed to challenge them in the day and bribe them for information at night. Number three, no boat or boat exploration, except when is needed for story progress. I've decided to not allow this because this is a the boat you get as a Particio side quest reward, basically. And although it is required to fully beat the game, I felt if I'm trying to do a solo Hikari, that this is kind of something that Hikari would not have been able to get on his own. Also, because of no boat, that means no Arcanist job is allowed, as that is an item that can only be gotten through boat exploration. And number five, I must complete all chapter twos before moving on to chapter threes and all chapter threes bef before moving on to chapter fours, etc. I just feel like this will help keep the game a little bit more balanced to keep the challenge up a little bit higher. My goal, very simple. Beat the final boss of the game using only Hikari. Is it possible? Let's find out. To start, I want to get as strong as fast as possible. In order to do that, I want to start getting some items that are much stronger than intended for our low level. Also, unlock some powerful challenge skills. To do this, we will need several things. The scholar job, the cleric job, several medium soul stones, one large soul stone, and the throw gill challenge skill. First, we're going to rush through Hikari's starting chapter really quick and head straight to the harbor to the north. We want to make sure to travel at night so we're getting extra experience, money, and just a higher frequency of fights. Once we cross the ocean, we will head to the nameless town to unlock the fast travel point and give us easy access to the night market. If you don't know what the night market is, the night market is a spot in the new Delsta Flats where you can buy all kinds of powerful items. Basically, it shows up every night, and if you just alternate between day and night, you'll find all kinds of vendors. We are looking for these two clerics. You've talked to the one on the left. They sell medium soul stones. I would pick up roughly five of these. You don't need too many, but it's nice to have some in case you come across any Kates or Octopuff travelers or just for some of the harder fights that are going to be coming up that we are not fully equipped for yet. While you're in the area, head on down to New Delsta and beat up this nerd for his ability to throw money at enemies. Pay to win, baby. Although not required, I would also recommend picking up the inventor job since it's right here. It will help a lot with your early AoE farming, and you want to hit around level 14 or 18 in order to survive long enough to get to the scholar and cleric job licenses. Now that we're leveled up, it's time to get that scholar job. So we're going to head towards Winterbloom and we're going to take a left to go up this mountain and acquire the scholar license. Now, I do recommend saving your JP. Use as little of it as possible. You might need some of it to progress, but we do need to get the evasive maneuver support skill. And we also need to get the evil ward support skill from the cleric. And this will take uh, definitely over a thousand. I don't know the exact number here, but... It's going to take enough, so you definitely want to be saving it up so you don't just have to sit and farm after you get these classes. In order to get the Cleric, we're going to go to Mount Wise, or rather we're going to head that direction, and we are going to be able to stop at the church on the hill and pick up this class. I would also recommend going all the way to Mount Wise in this case, as we're going to come back here a couple times over the course of what we're doing here. Now, we are finally all set up to do what I'm going to call the Encounter Skip. I don't consider this a glitch. This seems to be an exploit. Uh, it is something that was in Octopath 1 that was pretty well known, and we are going to keep using it here because we want to get as powerful as fast as possible. The technique is simple. We're going to equip evasive maneuvers and evil ward. 
And whenever we get to a save point or we're about to go into a high level zone, we want to get into a fight or in the case of a save point, we want to exit to the main screen and load into the game. This will reset our step counter. Now we're just going to walk. Make sure you're not running. All right. You got to walk during the daytime. You'll be able to get very, very far without getting into any fights. So we can get all kinds of items and stuff and much higher level zones than we would normally be able to. You get to them, you grab them, you teleport out. The very first thing I'm going to recommend you pick up is the JP Augmenter. It's quick, it's easy, and it'll just help you with your farming. I already did a video covering it, but it is in the Cavern of the Waves near Ochet's starting town. In addition to that, one of the items I want the most is the Rusty Staff. This is in the seat of the Water Sprite between Flame Church and Mount Wise. By using the above tactic, you can get to the staff with only one encounter, so you will need to be able to survive, but this is where Evil Ward comes in. It'll give you a very realistic chance of actually escaping, because this is a mid-level 20 encounter, and I am nowhere near that on my playthrough yet. So these enemies could definitely destroy me pretty easy. But follow this path, and you can get to the item in just a few reloads. Once you have the staff, head on back to Mount Wise. We are going to go to the mansion on the far right side of town, and we are going to make sure it's nighttime and talk to the gardener. We're going to gather information from, from him. It costs 3000 and he will reveal a hidden item, which is actually a large wind soul stone. This can do over 5,000 damage to a broken foe, so this is going to help us just delete an enemy upcoming. Now, with the ability to evade encounters, escape when we get unlucky, the ability to throw money, the rusty staff, and a large soul stone, we're ready for my true goal of this early game run. Unlocking the Arms Master. And with that said, our next destination is Crack Ridge and then Gravel. Using the same encounter skip that we've been using, we will carefully make our way north, making sure to stop at every save point, exit to the main menu, reset. You can also enter an encounter right before going into the level 45 zone, so your step counter is reset. This is when I like to use my medium soul stones as those fights are still a little bit too hard for us typically and the medium soul stones will help trivialize them so you could easily get through them to just reset your encounter steps before going into the high level zone. Once you get to the Western Gravel Wilds, we're gonna take a quick detour to the Ivory Ravine. Now this is a level 50 zone, so you gotta be careful, but if you follow this path, you are gonna be able to get one of the best axes in the game. Now, fast travel out as to not die trying to escape, and then you're gonna do the exact same thing a second time, but this time we're gonna go all the way to gravel. Now, this is probably the most RNG part of the run so far. You will have a fight guaranteed every single time I tried in this level 45 zone trying to get there. And so a lot of times they're just gonna surprise you, you're gonna die and have to reload. However, with Evil Ward, you actually have a chance to escape. Typically, it is like not possible. But with this on, I actually got this on my third or fourth attempt. So it shouldn't be that hard, but there will be a little bit of frustration involved with the RNG, no doubt. Once you enter Gravel, there is only one man standing between us and greatness, the Debt Collector. This is a target you're going to have to challenge with Akari and defeat. He has 15 thousand hp so he's by far the hardest fight that we've had to do so far luckily we have everything we need he is weak to staff so the um mystic staff attack from the cleric is very powerful here you will miss sometimes but it is still pretty good for breaking a couple shields you can also just use vengeful blade and heal yourself every turn and start breaking the shields that way by being very defensive now what's important is once he's broken you want to use your large soul stone you don't want to use it unless he's broken once he's broken, you're going to do over 5,000 damage. Then you're going to break him again while still keeping yourself alive, healing. Um, and then once he's broken, you're going to th uh, fully charge your BP and throw money at him. This would normally do 2,000 damage for 2,000 gold, but because he's broken, you're going to do 4,000 damage total. Now, between those two attacks doing 9,000 damage and him getting hit with your Vengeful Blade basically every turn, he should already almost be dead. There's one more good latent power attack or maybe a axe attack with your fancy new axe should get him there. Um, you could even throw in a few medium soul stones if you want to speed up the process. If you are still having trouble with this, feel free to farm a bit more, get a little bit stronger, go get some money and go ahead and get some better armor. In fact, there's even a free quartz shield in a chest in this town that should help you a ton. With the debt collector dead, we have reached our goal of getting the arms master before hitting level 20, which wasn't an official goal. I just thought it was kind of cool to do it, especially on a solo run. 
Uh, but more importantly, this will allow us to turn our rusty weapons into the game-breaking powerful weapons for the early to mid game. Now that I'm an arms master, I like to run around and get a few cool challenge abilities, uh, such as compound formula, which you can get in mount wise by beating up one of the nerdy scholars. So you can have kind of good AOE farming skills with your new staff and then having some good just, you know, six fold strike attacks with your new powerful axe and stuff. Hikari is kind of unique where he could be a mage while not having a scholar job equipped because you can just get all your mage abilities from your challenge attacks. Compound formula is a very powerful attack and it's magic th of three different elements, a total of three times. So, you know, it goes like light, dark, and I think it's fire. I don't remember. You guys can see it on screen, but I'm not looking at it right now. Now we're equipped with a plus 381 attack axe and a plus 320 elemental attack staff and an awesome set of damage and abilities. We've got some good armor. It's time to show this game who the real boss is. So that's where we're going to end it today. I'm thinking about making this probably three episodes. This was mostly a setup episode. And then next one, we're probably going to tackle the meat of the content. I assume a lot of it won't be too difficult, but anything that stands out, I'll make sure to talk about. But if you want to follow this journey, please like, comment, subscribe. You know all that stuff. Also, if you want to watch me play it live, I stream pretty frequently here on YouTube and on Twitch. So you get to stop by and say hi and interact with me during the actual playthrough itself. Assuming that this video does well and the series does well, I will try to do this with other characters. I think each character will add something interesting to the overall uh, challenge, such as Particio probably couldn't become an arms master at all if I'm doing the same technique where you can only use those class actions because he can't either fight the guy, but he also can't uh, you know, hire him, I'm pretty sure. But then in the opposite situation, he'd be able to get uh, items from townspeople, which I currently can't as Akari. So I think there would be a lot of diversity there, which sounds fun. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. Until next time, the Perplatopus is Perplatopus. Much love. See you around.